Hi everyone, I was recently asked how to use an Arduino to control some of the lights in a vehicle and they were after animated indicators or turn signals and for this I think we'll use these WS2812B addressable LEDs. I thought this might be an interesting thing to investigate so today let's see what we can come up with. One quick word of warning here before we start, this should only be used for experimentation and off-road purposes or to add additional lights to your vehicle. I really don't recommend that you replace safety related vehicle lights such as brakes and indicators with these mods as there are various laws and standards that they should meet in order for them to be legal on the road. So if you want to make this, uh, you do set your own risk. The brief for the project today is as follows. So an Arduino should control four sets of lights, uh, it's two brake lights and two indicators. When indicating, the indicator should animate outwards. Uh, when the hazards are on, they should flash solid on and off, and of course the brake lights should just work as normal. Electrically, the system should be powered from the lighting circuits themselves and not require any other 12 volt connection to the car. This makes it easier to install. The basic idea will look something like this. The 12 volts from the connections to the car lights will pass through these diodes and be used to power a book converter. The book converter will drop the 12 volts down to 5 volts and that will be used to power the Arduino. Digital outputs on the Arduino will then be connected to the LED strips, and these strips are also powered from the buck converter as well. We'll also have to signal to the Arduino which of the lights are on, and uh, the main problem here that we have to solve is connecting the 12 volt signals from the car lights with the 5 volt digital inputs of the Arduino. The simplest way to do this would be to use a potential divider. And a potential divider is just two resistors in series, and we can vary the output voltage by adjusting the ratio of the two resistors. So let's say we have a 12 volt input and we want 5 volts at the output just here. Now as we need almost no current for this application we can use uh, moderately high resistances. So let's say we choose 20k uh, for R2. Now we can use the potential divider equation to find the value we need for R1 uh, which in this case is going to be 28k. So let's change this to 28k. And you can see that we now do have 5 volts uh, at the output. Now looking through my box of parts, I find that I don't have a 28k resistor, I have a 27k resistor. So let's alter it to 27k, see what difference that makes. Now we can see we're getting just above 5 volts here, uh, and that's probably okay. Uh, the absolute maximum rating on the Arduino input pins is about 5.5 volts, so this looks like it should work. However, there is one very big issue with this setup, and that's that a car power system is never at exactly 12 volts. When the vehicle is stopped, the voltage will be somewhere between 12.2 and 12.6 volts. So let's change this to 12.6. And already you can see we're getting dangerously close to our absolute maximum input limit on the Arduino. However, even worse than that, when the engine's running, it could run up to about 14.7 volts. So if we change it to there, we can see now we're way over what we can possibly feed into an Arduino. If we do that, that might be the last digital signal it ever sees. So we need a better way of regulating the output voltage to around 5 volts, one which is independent of the input voltage. So I'm going to investigate three different options here, so using a Zener diode, using a Schottky diode, and using an optocoupler. First let's investigate Zener diodes. So regular diodes act like valves, uh, only allowing current through them in one direction. Uh, they usually have a drop of 0.5, 0.6 volts across them, as you can see here, so we're recording about 0.6 volts. However, if you apply the voltage in the reverse direction, so we swap the terminals here, uh, then no current will flow through them. Now, Zenas are actually designed to be used um, in the reverse direction. So let's swap this out for a um, Zena. And in the forward direction, you can see things haven't changed. We're still getting a 0.6 volt drop across the diode. But when we reverse it, you can see we're now dropping about 5.1 volts across that diode. So this point in the circuit here will always be at 5.1 volts above ground when we have a, the supply switched on. Uh, this resistor is just here to limit current through the, uh, the Zener, and realistically I probably use a higher resistance than that, so let's set that to say 10k, and we get even closer to 5 volts. The beauty of this circuit though, is that varying the input voltage has almost no effect on the output voltage. So you can see we're set to 12 volts at the moment, we can drop this down, uh, if we drop it all the way down to 10, you can see we're still getting 5 volts out. And if we boost this all the way up to 15 volts, which you should never see in a vehicle anyway, and we're still pretty much at 5 volts. So this is a much nicer way of doing it than to use the potential divider. But what if you don't have a 5.1 Zeno lying around? Well, we do have another option, and that's to use a Schottky diode. Schottky's are similar to standard silicon diodes, but they have a small, smaller forward voltage drop, about 0.2 to 0.3 volts, compared to the usual 0.6 to 0.7 volts. 
So at the moment, I've got a standard silicon diode in my circuit, and I've connected the cathode of the diode to plus 5 volts instead of connecting it to ground. And that means that this point up here is always going to be at the forward voltage drop of this diode above 5 volts. Now, we can't use a standard silicon diode for this because, as you can see, we're far too high. We need to be much closer to 5 volts. But if we change this to a Schottky diode instead, because Schottky diodes have such a much smaller voltage drop, you can see that now this is perfectly acceptable. A final option would be to use an optocoupler, which uses an LED, seen here, and a photodiode or phototransistor in the same package. When the LED lights up, the phototransistor conducts, and in this way we can pass a signal without direct electrical connection. In order not to damage the optocoupler, we must add a series uh, resistor to the LED. Now, an infrared LED usually has a forward voltage drop of around 1 to 1.1 volts. So we need to drop the 12 from here, minus 1.1, so that's 10.9 volts we're dropping. And then using Ohm's law and R equals V over I, and an LED current of about maybe 5 milliamps, we can get the series resistor value to be around 2.2K. And you can see we're getting about 5 volts at our output, which is basically what we're after. And if we take off the uh, 12 volt supply, you can see that it basically drops down to zero. Finally, let's see all these options together and decide which one to choose. In each case, I've added a 10K pull down resistor to ground. Uh, and that's because when the light in the vehicle is off, the 12 volt line might be floating. I haven't actually checked in my car to see if that's true or not. Uh, that is, it's not connected to 12 volts or ground. Uh, the inputs on the Arduino don't like to be left floating. They'll pick up electrical noise and they might read high or low seemingly at random. So these pull down resistors ensure that the Arduino always reads low when the input light is off. For the Zener and Schottky circuits, you can see when these are switched on, that these resistors also act as potential dividers. So the roughly 12 volts from the car is being divided down to 6 volts by these potential dividers, and then the respective diodes are clamping that 6 volts down to 5 volts. As you can see, all of the circuits work fine at 12 volts, and if I bump the voltage up here to 15 volts, uh, we're still not going to damage the Arduino's digital inputs here. Optocouple is a little bit expensive, so we can ignore that option. Um, there's no obvious winner between the Zener and the Schottky approach, but I'm going to build my circuit using Zeners. Uh, you can also find a schematic using Schottky's linked in the description. So here's the completed schematic. Uh, let's zoom into the brake lights because that's a simpler part just here. Basically, if the brake light is off, you can see that this is the input going to the Arduino brake signal. This is going to be connected to ground via this 10K resistor just here, so it'll be seen as low by the Arduino. When the brake light is activated, so when we have 12 volts here, we're going to get some current flowing through this potential divider, which will divide this point down to 6 volts, and then this point will be clamped down to 5.1 volts max by the Zener diode just here. At the same time, current flows through diode D1 here, and flows along here, and then goes into our buck regulator. And the buck regulator then provides 5 volts out, which powers the Arduino, and also, of course, powers the LED strips as well. The left and right indicators are pretty much the same, although if you did want to remove your original indicator bulbs, and remember from earlier, I don't recommend you do this, uh, you'd need to add about a 6 ohm 50 watt resistor um, in its place, as shown. So vehicle indicators tend to flash faster when an indicator bulb isn't working, and this resistor prevents that from happening. If you're going to do that, make sure you provide thick enough cables to wire this in, so cables with at least a 2 to 3 amp uh, current rating. So with all of that theory out of the way, let's grab some parts and build up a test system on a breadboard. In this setup, I'm using these tactile switches to simulate the 12 volts coming from the left indicator, the right indicator, and the brake, respectively. Uh, for the completed project, though, these tact switches aren't going to be required. The Arduino code is written using the FastLED LED library, and if you want to learn a bit more on how to use that, do check out my FastLED Basics series uh, linked above. All right, let's connect this up to a test board and let's give it a go. The middle one should be the brake lights, which works fine. Left indicator. right indicator, and the hazards should all both flash together. 
Well, now we've seen that it works, let's take it out to the car and uh, wire it up, and let's make sure it works in a real vehicle. so that works as expected. Uh, I'm not actually going to install this in my car as I'm perfectly happy with the lights I have, uh, but I do hope you found this useful and that you might inspire you to create your own car related project. The code I've written for this is hopefully fairly straightforward to edit and extend. Speaking of which, the code and schematics are available on GitHub at the link in the description. And don't try and alter your car electrics without at least a basic understanding of what you're doing, because uh, vehicle repairs can get very expensive. Okay, see you next time.